Sponsored by WinWing Technologies. Once again, another bright idea that balances versatility and realism. Hello valued viewers and I hope you're all doing very well and welcome to this dummies guide for the AH64D Apache. Today we're going to be covering the very basics of the control bindings, startup procedure, the eye hands which is like a helmet mounted display and the symbology involved, very basic flight operation, operating the gun from the pilot seat, operating the rockets from the pilot seat and some very basic navigation. So first, control bindings. Escape, adjust controls. We've been flying the Apache for a few weeks now, so we've got a pretty good idea which controls we need. I'm gonna go over them quite quickly. If you need to, please just pause or slow down the video. First, AH-64D George AI Helper. If we're going to control the other crew member as George AI, we'll need these commands. Up, down, left, right, and we can show his menu and we can hide his menu. The use of this is covered in the second dummies guide video that we've did for the Apache. Next, to the pilot section, categories. First, we'll do axis commands. We're going to need the joystick, the cyclic pitch, and the cyclic roll. Also the collective, which you will bind as your throttle lever. Scroll down, we'll need the rudder. For me, it's a set of rudder pedals. I personally suggest using an axis tune and adding a bit of positive curve. It gives you a bit more detail around the small movements, but it's up to you. Wheel brakes. I have toe brakes on my rudder pedals, so I've set axes for the wheel brakes left and the wheel brakes right. Finally, I've done a zoom view, which is another axis on my HOTAS. Allows me to zoom in and out. That's the axis done. Next. I'm going to go to everything except axis. Let's start with what I've got on my joystick. First, trim. To actually assign the trim, force trim hold mode switch R or up. The actual use of the trim I've covered in our second dummies guide for this helicopter. Also, we have a trim reset to reset to neutral trim. Next, a very important four-way switch. WAS, weapon action switch, allows us to choose which weapon we're going to use. Up for gun. Down. Currently not in use, but it will be in the future. Left. Select rockets. Right. Select missiles, the Hellfire missiles. Next. By default, your trigger guard will be closed. You will need to open it to be able to fire the weapons. Trigger guard open. And I wouldn't bother closing it again, to be honest. Next. Symbology select switch up and down. This allows you to choose which symbology you want to show on the iHads. To fire the weapon, we will need weapons trigger switch first detent. Note we also have a second detent. At the time of making this video, we only used the first detent, but I would suggest binding the second detent for future use. Next, countermeasures to fire the flares. Flare dispense button depress to fire the chaff. Chaff dispense button depress. Next, if you want to do an automatic easy start or stop of the aircraft without having to do the actual procedure yourself. You can be lazy and you can use automatic startup and automatic shutdown. Next, the iHads alignment, which we'll come to after this. We have Boresight Polarity Switch, BS or PLRT. I suggest binding those. Next, for night vision, we may want to choose which sensor we use for our night vision. Pinvis or TADS, we'll need to bind the buttons. NVS select switch pinvis or TADS. We cover that in the third dummies guide video. And finally, our screen cursor arrows. These are six commands which allow us to manipulate these MFD screens without physically pushing the buttons with our mouse cursor. We can go up, down, left, right, cursor enter depress, and we can select which screen with cursor display select button depress. Those are what I consider all of the essential commands on the Apache from the pilot's position to operate it fully. Next, cold start obviously from the driver's seat. First, let's close the window or the door. Next, battery on. Right click once. Next, APU. Left click to raise the cover. Left click to turn it on and wait until it shows on. On. Engines ready to start. Left engine first. This switch here. Right click. 
and release. Left MFD, monitor the engine speed until it gets to 20. We are then going to set the left throttle lever to idle. We do that by pressing right alt and home. We can now monitor the engine speed again until it settles somewhere about 67% and settle. Repeat the process now for the right engine. So the right engine switch is there. Right click, release, monitor until we get to 20%. We're now going to put the right throttle lever in the idle position with right shift and home. Monitor and both engines settle. Next, we're going to manually drag both throttle levers to the fly position. Drag there with left mouse click, drag there, and we're going to leave them there until we land and shut the engines down again. Next, APU off and close the cover. Engine started. Next, we're going to align our eye hands, that's our eye reticle here. So first, this primary lighting knob needs to be dragged to bright position. Then, I'm going to use my left MFD to go weapon, foresight, eye hands. Next, we're going to do two things. We're going to move our head position about with our VR or with our track IR until these rings here are concentric. And at the same time, we're going to put our eye hands crosshair, which is this here, in the center of it. And once that's all done, we can either press foresight on the MFD to confirm, or much more easy, we can press this button we looked at earlier, foresight, polarity switch, foresight. So we're going to do that. So let's get it in position with the cross over it, be as accurate as we can, press. It's, it's, the light's gone out, so the iHads is now aligned. Next, uncage our standby ADI. This guy here, hover the mouse over it, mouse scroll wheel down to uncage, and then trim it back to neutral with mouse scroll wheel. Next, power up our CMDS. Right mouse button. It will now warm up. Next, we're going to check the position confidence of our inertial navigation system. I'm going to go on my right screen here, TSD, Util. We can see our position confidence there. The general rule of thumb is if it's showing green, it's okay, and it should settle on about 0 0.008, 0 0.007. So that's good to go. It's natural to have a master warning at this point. We can just cancel it by pressing on it. Next, we need to enable our radar altimeter as it is disabled as default. So I'm going to go to my left MFD, aircraft, flight, set. Press this one here so that this shows as solid, solid circle. Radar altimeter set, takes 30 seconds to warm up. Set your exterior and interior lights as required and that is fully started up. Next, the iHads symbology. I've chosen a fresh hot started Apache for this. This is the default mode that we will see from a hot start, which is the hover mode. There are several modes and we'll talk about that in a bit. First of all, basic symbology. At the top, heading tape showing the current heading of the aircraft, currently 252. Left, a percent of the current torque load. And as I put my collective up, you can see I put more torque on the vehicle. Very basic rules, try not to go above 100% for too long. Here is our current speed in knots. The scale on the right actually shows two things. The number here shows our current altitude. The arrow here will also go up and down, showing our vertical speed. So if we were sinking, it would be going down. If it were increasing, it would be going up. Our cross in the middle here is called a line of sight reticle. And if I were to move my head about, my VR or my track IR, you can see it moves with me. This guy here is called our queued line of sight reticle. It's showing our acquisition source. My current acquisition source, as set by default, is the TADS. Note, there are dots on the extremities of my line of sight reticle, currently a dot on the top. This shows the direction to get from my line of sight reticle to my queued line of sight reticle. So if I were to move left, tells me to go right, up, tells me to go down, left, and so on. We can see that TADS is our current acquisition source because it shows TADS down here, and that will change depending on which source you've selected. We have a very small your slip gauge here, very important when flying. Next, our field of regard, this box here. There are three elements. First, this box here shows currently 
where we are seeing. The dot there shows our current cued line of sight reticle, which is that there. And this here is our field of regard. So if I start moving my head around, you can see where I look within the field of regard. Note, if I were to put my current view outside of the field of regard, my line of sight reticle flashes, showing that we are out of limits and out of limits for the gun to be able to operate 1.5 shown here is our range and range source currently at 1.5 kilometers and finally p-hmd is our site select that just leads us to the fact that we can change which symbology we show via symbology select switch up and down this allows us to change through different modes which tailor exactly which symbologies we're going to be using we will use these different modes through different flight regimes and cover it further on a different video next basic taxi takeoff flight and landing this is going to be very very simple just the absolute basics the first thing i'm going to do is press right control and enter and that brings my input viewer up here so you can see cyclic forward cyclic back cyclic left cyclic right rudder right or anti-torque pedal uh, rudder left our throttle is always going to stay the same on flight we're not going to change that and of course our collective up and down first thing i'm going to do is a little bit of cyclic forward and a little bit of collective and you'll see that we start rolling forward if we want to stop moving forward then pretty much cyclic back and that will stop us moving forward and off the collective completely next if we want to do a sharp turn this is optional really but what we can do is unlock the tail wheel so tail wheel unlock and that's going to allow us to swing the back around you want to give us a quick example RC we swing it baby that's usually where you hit your teammate with my tail wheel unlocked i'm going to input left rudder or left anti-torque and it's going to swing me around just be a little bit careful when doing this obviously we and i'm going to get a bit forward as well okay more or less lined up before i can relock the tail wheel i need to have it nice and straight so we're just going to move in a straight line here and off the cycling, let it settle, relock. Oh, it's already done it automatically. Yeah, uh, it does it. Tail wheel relocked. Right. In terms of takeoff, we can either do vertical takeoff or we can take off kind of like a plane. Um, usually, if we are very heavily loaded, we can take off by going down the runway, and the forward motion will help us take off, or we can go straight up, which is harder. And we're going to go straight up. I guess you could call this moderately loaded at the moment so to take off vertically up i'm going to keep my cyclic roughly in the center here i'm going to make small corrections as i go i'm going to increase my collective as i do that i'm going to balance the rotation of the uh, aircraft with my anti-torque pedals so if it's going right i want to go left and so on and just very careful balancing act and gear do not retract on the aircraft so don't worry about the gear so you can see up in the top left much better than i can explain i'm balancing left anti-torque i'm balancing collective and I'm balancing a little bit of cyclic. That's it. If I want to transition to forward flight, I'm going to allow the uh, cyclic to move forward slightly. This is the more I point my nose down with cyclic forward, the faster the aircraft will go, along with the amount of collective that I put in. And it's just a constant balancing act between cyclic, anti-torque pedal, and collective. And you will never stop balancing. Once you've learned to fly one helicopter, you can pretty much fly them all. Just the basic skills will transfer through to all helicopters. Okay, what we're gonna do is come round and we're going to land, uh, rolling, landing a bit like an aeroplane. In terms of turning, you can use just your anti-torque if you want, or you can use cyclic as well, or cyclic just on its own, uh, depending on your speeds, and that's a bit more detail than we want to go in today so we're going to come in for a landing now to arrest our speed we're going to reduce the collective a bit and we're going to pull back on the cyclic nose up make us go slower nose down and make us go faster so speed 56 knots let's arrest that with a bit of half cyclic and we're going to come down on the collective all the time of course balancing it with the anti-torque pedals and you can see me working the cyclic there just to keep everything under control 30 knots. In terms of what speed you're supposed to land at, I don't really know. You can see the VSI on the right there saying my current sink rate. 20 odd knots. Touchdown. 
dump the collective down, keep us straight with the anti-torque pedals. And that's a landing, and like I said, most of the aircraft, you know, as long as they're wheeled, for instance, will all land pretty much the same. If they're skidded, obviously you've got to be careful about doing a landing like this. But not much to add, it's a very easy aircraft to fly compared to some of the helicopters. Very hard to do anything wrong. VRS isn't really much of a problem you have to worry about. And one thing I've got to say, is we can see the vector of our travel with this circle here in a line. I'm just going to show that quickly. It's quite an important thing. So I'm just going to get rolling forwards. You see, if we're moving forwards, the line uh, moves from our line of sight reticle upwards, showing that we're moving forwards by a certain amount. If we were to reduce that forward speed, it will come down. If we were to go backwards, it would show backwards. If we were to side slip left, it would go left and so on. It's a really useful tool when you're in the air if you want to know if you're slipping left, if you're slipping right, if you're going forwards, if you're going backwards, or anything in between. The line, by the way, is called the velocity vector. The circle at the end of the line is called the acceleration Q. Note that this extra symbology will only be available in the IHAS symbology mode, bob up, transition, and hover. Next, using the 30mm chin cannon from the driver's position. First, master arm on. We press it, note that it does not work because we are on the ground, we can ground override it. Master arm on. Next, we're going to waz the gun, we're going to select the gun, waz up. Note, rounds 300 shown there, how many rounds we've got for the gun. Next, trigger guard, open. Next, ranging, left MFD here, weapon. Manual ranging here, click there. On this screen, click A and enter. That enables automatic range calculation. And finally, our burst limit. 10 rounds, 20 rounds, 50 rounds, 100 rounds, or no limit. Of course, it's got to be no limit. Very simply, all you do now is aim your line of sight reticle. As long as it's within the field of regard here that we talked about earlier, but note there are other limits to the gun. So I'm aiming a position here that says ballistic limit. That means that shot is not achievable. Let me try and find another limit. There, that one there, elevation limit. So wherever that is, we cannot get because of the elevation limit. So if I find a place where there is no limit like there, I press first trigger, D10, and it fires. Can't fire there because of ballistic limit. Can't fire there because of elevation limit. Okay. Uh, let's go and shoot something, I guess. So let's take off. Should have some baddies just behind us. Resisting temptation to shoot RC in face. Put our line of sight reticle on the baddies. Have fun. There is little more satisfying in life than uh, shooting a bunch of baddies with that. Next, rockets. I'm just going to put the bird down. So, rockets. First, we're going to have to waz the rockets. Select the rockets, and of course, we press weapon action switch left to select the rockets. Do that. We'll now get the rocket symbology. Note this kind of eye beam type thing here. It's called a rocket steering cursor. Now if we look at the rocket pods of which we've got four at the moment, they have the ability to pivot on their pylons. We can change the angle that they fire at slightly. To represent that, let's see if we move our head around. The cursor here, if we go out of limits of where the rocket pods can aim at, go dotted. Solid. Dotted. So we can only fire the rockets when the cursor is solid, i.e. within limits. To actually aim the rockets, the way we're going to do that is to tally up the line of sight reticle, this cross here, onto the vertical element here of the rocket steering cursor, and where they intersect will be the place where the rockets are aimed to hit. That will make sense when I'm in the air. Next, to set our salvo size, sorry, ripple size, weapon, quantity, how many do I want to be able to ripple, let's say, four. To actually fire, press and hold, weapon, trigger switch, first detent. So let's go and see that in action, shall we? This takes a little bit of getting used to. I am going to aim my line of sight reticle onto the rocket cursor, press and hold trigger, <laughs> and it will allow 
the amount of rockets that you've selected in your weapons page to be fired for as long as you press and hold the uh, trigger first eaten. That makes sense. So let's go and try again. Again, it takes a little bit of getting used to. It's kind of uh, you'll see when you try it yourself. It is not intuitive. Not intuitive at all. There you go. I'll hang a bit now. <laughs> and it, you need to not be slipping too. You have yeah. To I mean, you can technically do it, but yeah, it will reduce your accuracy, right? Yeah, it'll be harder to line. It'll be hard to aim. So you already want to do it a straight line without slip, and you can neutralize your slip with the slip gauge is kind of down there. Let's try and get that done to show you. Uh, so you neutralize your switch, a slip, by the way, it's done mainly with your anti torque pedals. So let's try and get that ball in the center. Oh, and I've run out of rockets. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But there you go. That's how you would fire them typically or more on a profile like that. And finally, basic waypoint navigation. Let's go into our TSD screen. So TSD, you can see that is us there. That is waypoints one, two, three, and four, which I've put in in the mission editor. Note we can also zoom in, zoom out the display. Our standard waypoint one is gonna be our selected waypoint known as home plate. If we want to visualize home plate, we have to be in the correct symbology mode. We need to be in transition or cruise mode. So let's go to either of those modes with symbology select up. And you can see now that is the symbology for the home plate. That is representing waypoint one. You can see waypoint one is selected. It is 2.1 kilometers away. That information is repeated there. Let's go and fly to waypoint one now. Note that on the heading tape, we also have an upward turn chevron showing the direction to the currently selected home plate or waypoint. 1.4 kilometers, 0.9 kilometers. Note that when we get to a very close distance to the waypoint, it will automatically switch itself to the next one in the sequence, which of course is waypoint two. So let's see that happen. So we're about to go over it now. Ping, it's now automatically selected waypoint two, you can see. And you can continue the chain. Note, if I wanted to skip a waypoint or go to a particular one, I can do that too. So I'm going to go to RTE route. I'm going to go to direct two, direct to a certain waypoint. Which point? Well, I'm going to select that there. And I'm going to select, let's say, waypoint three. It's now directing us directly to waypoint three. And you can see our home plate and our chevron. There they are, are showing us where waypoint three is. And that ends our summary, and I hope that was useful, and see you later. The main Grim Reapers videos are now being split between this YouTube channel and the Grim Reapers 2 YouTube channel. So if you want to see all of the Grim Reapers videos, please consider subscribing to both channels. And thank you for watching.